Now, um, please note that we are recording, and I will just start with a little bit of an intro about Dr. Chow. Um, Dr. Chow is an associate professor at City University of Hong Kong. She received her MSW and PhD from the University of Kong Hong Kong, but she did spend one year with us at the University of Toronto as well. And she has a postgraduate degree in narrative therapy and community work from the University of Melbourne and Dulwich, Dulwich Centre in Australia. And based on her strong belief that individuals can be empowered to face life challenges with resilience, Dr. Chow's current research interests lie in the main areas in integrating narrative practice to open new knowledge in holistic health, adopt an unbiased and scientific approach to research on life adversities and wisdom, self-help and mutual aid, spirituality and recovery, resilience and culture in social gerontology. Thus, most of her teaching and research scholarships are evidence-based practice studies, providing knowledge transfer activities to enhance individual and community well-being. Dr. Chow investigates the impact of narrative therapy on diverse groups and, established, and has established a network of community practice in health and social care industries to deliver effective interventions and capacity building opportunities to different individuals and groups with special needs, including social work and counseling students, older adults, family caregivers, persons with disabilities, chronically ill persons such as stroke survivors and persons living with pain. So thank you very much, Dr. Chow, for joining us today, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Asmia. Uh, yeah. I'm so privileged to have this opportunity uh, to share some of my uh, latest uh, practice and research uh, scholarship here today. Um, uh, the topic I'm going to cover is uh, group narrative therapy for legacy building and wisdom rediscovery among older adults in Asian communities a randomized control trial. Um, so let me begin by sharing that older adults generally accumulate wearable wisdom throughout their lives, but neither they nor others may recognize the value of this. This may constrain problem solving, self-esteem and relationship with others. Uh, in four bi-weekly uh, uh, sessions, Older Chinese adults participate in collaborative conversations with a narrative therapist to re-examine their life experience and recognize their accumulative um, uh, life wisdom. The intervention uh, significantly improves self-perception of wisdom compared to baseline and a control uh, with the short and long-term effects. Narrative therapy uh, could be employed to assist older adults to recognize the value of their wisdom, uh, to enhance uh, their self-worth and participation in family and communities. So let's see how to move from here. Okay, so let's begin. So uh, may I begin by acknowledging uh, my colleagues who, um, special thanks to those who provide very helpful uh, support and suggestions and comment to the project. This is a GRF project, which is funded by Hong Kong University Grounds Committee. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Uh, Jackie Jam, Simon Fong, Phoebe uh, Chen, and we have uh, 18 community collaborators uh, for helping us to recruit the participation, I mean participants from different contact, uh, contexts. So, um, and of course, uh, all my lovely uh, research assistants and my students. So these are the rundown of today's uh, um, presentation. I know because of time constraint, uh, I just share a lot of uh, pictures uh, of my practice and some of the findings uh, from, from these studies. So uh, basically, this, uh, I have, uh, uh, this project, I have uh, published it in uh, Innovation in Aging that you can uh, make reference to, OK? So let's begin with the background. Society stigmatized aging and older adult. Young people uh, displayed ageism and negative attitudes towards older old, old age. Elders themselves report feeling that their knowledge has little usefulness to others. Oh, though, uh, though older adults generally process 
rich and variable wisdom, empirical evidence on whether this wisdom can benefit themselves and future generations remain uncertain. So that affects the sense of selves over uh, you know, old age. Um, the, but how can we uh, identify or understand the sense of self? Uh, by going through, uh, by listening to the narr narratives is one of the way. Changes of uh, living situation, uh, social life, and self-evaluation over time contributes to the construction of the self-concept and the social construction of the identity. Older adults are affected by the dominant narrative that can limit the way they interpret the world and themselves, such as only focusing on the negative aspect of their life situation and experience that corresponds to their problem-saturated identity, such as the patient um, uh, uh, and, and so, uh, such survivors who have to be to rely on other people uh, to take care of, and, and they will perceive themselves as um, uh, burden of the family and, and uh, facing a, a personal failure at the later stage of their life. So uh, we want to do something which can rescue their life wisdom, since we believe uh, we, we all have accumulated life wisdom over time. So the research project is uh, to examine its effectiveness in rediscovering wisdom and legacy building, test its long-term effects at two and eight months respectively. So briefly, what is uh, narrative therapy? Um, I just highlight a bit. It is a postmodern uh, psychotherapeutic techniques emphasized on personal experience and elaboration of meaning, facilitate people's expression of their experience of life. Instead of focusing on the problem, we focus on the positive element of the experience. NT, that is narrative therapy, we use people as processing both wayland histories and wisdom. But the problem is we prefer problem talk instead of a strength and meaningful uh, conversation. So we need to shift the paradigm. And with the assumption is where reality is subjective and there is a large degree of liberty in the interpretation of events. Vast majority of events have taken uh, place are not noticed or being reckoned considered insignificant or forgotten when they do not support our already established will because of memory bias, selection, attention, and filtering. When our wheels of ourselves or others or of the world is only one wheel out of an indefinite number of other possible wheels. So rationale of anti individual are personal agency, have personal agency with different roles and identities in different social contexts. Some people are preoccupied with problem saturated story and have told and which create a totalizing effects on the person. This is not fair uh, to, to the person and po uh, provide a uh, label and uh, stereotyping on the, uh, which confined uh, the persons. So we believe the person is not the problem. The problem is the problem. They are core belief. People are expert of their own life. They have many skills, competency, belief, values, commitment, ability that will assist them to change the relationship with the problem in their lives. Each of us have a coherent story that is composed of events of our past, current uh, and future um, plans, as well as the meaning that we ascribe to this event. To separate the person with the problem through externalizing uh, conversation and to reopen up uh, any possibility for the persons to find unique, unique outcomes and choose alternative way of life for a preferred storyline. So the goal is to begin to let go of the problematic story that has become uh, fossilized over time, start writing a new preferred story that one can begin living, mean, uh, which means uh, recovering for cotton and lost events from the past that have left by the uh, wayside to resurrect past success, strength, and resources that pops up a more positive and forgotten story. So the hypothesis here is the group which received anti fused with a tree of life metaphor would demonstrate significantly higher positive change on um, a wisdom score compared 
with the control group. Okay, this picture, uh, we hope to gather what I have uh, mentioned earlier in, into uh, pictures, which can be easily understand by others. So, oh, uh, I have all the pointers here. So the green line is the, uh, okay, sorry, the, the black line is the problem storyline. So when the person come to consult a worker, they always bring in uh, the problem situate the storyline and uh, embedded with a problem situated identity. But, uh, but um, there are indeed over time many life events, like each of these uh, cross represent one life event. So when the persons come to uh, introduce themselves to a worker, uh, they just select some of the uh, life uh, events together to, to create a story. Um, uh, um, well, uh, we'll call uh, trauma storyline uh, in order to represent himself. But um, uh, uh, the challenge uh, or the cur curious uh, part of a narrative practice is we explore. We use other conversation like uh, exploring the coping storyline um, through this uh, orange line uh, to find out uh, what uh, they have done uh, previously to help them to resolve the problem, and and the reason how they the reason why they do it there must be some hopes and dreams, uh, some purpose in life and commitment which uh, the person is working for. So uh, we also explore the storyline for hopes and dreams, uh, which creates the green uh, story storyline. Uh, now what I'm trying to uh, picture here is when we connect con connect the uh, coping storyline and the hopes and dreams storylines, we find out indeed the shaded part of the persons indeed are very rich. And we are able to connect all the forgotten life uh, events together. And through this conversation, uh, the person will be able to rescue the, uh, reconnect the person's values, belief, commitment in life and purpose in life again. So this, this is the most beautiful part of the conversation when the narrative practitioner uh, engage in dialogue with the persons. So in the, um, uh, uh, what we try to do is to collect evidence from the past in order to uh, connect uh, the persons uh, to, to um, consolidate the experience. So the, each person has multiple identity and multiple storyline. It's not only one problem uh, story um, that they come to present to us. So if we just look at the problem storyline, we are totalizing the person, uh, which is uh, not, uh, um, which have negative effect on the persons in the long run. Okay, let's carry on. So how to achieve the goal and objective of the narrative practice? So we, we try to um, use, uh, based on the paradigm of social construction, we deconstruct the problem through, with the person through externalized conversation. We reconstruct the persons uh, uh, by using, uh, uh, I mean, with the unique outcome, with the values and the belief of the person using reoffering conversation and we thicken, we thicken the new, um, uh, preferred storyline through remembering conversation outside witness and definitional ceremony. So, uh, so these are the tools, the conversations that uh, we will uh, practice with uh, our, um, on the daily purposes, even though not in a therapeutic relationship. Indeed, well, after I learned, uh, well, I begin to practice narrative therapy by reading books. But, um, uh, but later on, I joined uh, Dawes Center uh, for a whole year online, uh, as well as um, uh, joining the conference. I find out it is very effective. In a way, sometimes I also, it helps me, uh, I can narrative, uh, I can empty myself as well. So, so uh, it makes me feel stronger when I feel uh, confronted with different challenge and hardships. Um, so these are the major call, uh, conversation skills that we will uh, um, uh, go uh, 
teach or to, to practice with our students. Okay, why well, using metaphors? Metaphors facilitate their thinking and are also more compelling than structural structured language and are more easily assimilated. It provides a distant relationship with the problem. People can share within a safe dis distance and facilitate the process of meaning making of the current distress, reconstruct relationship and life eventually. Denvra suggests that metaphor used in therapy should be based built on the person's everyday life to um, uh, create resonance. So let's uh, briefly go through um, what, is, what is involved uh, in, uh, in this uh, tree of life uh, meta me uh, uh, metaphor. Um, so there are ba basically four components. The, uh, the first part is part of a tree, which helps us to understand uh, the person's uh, better by going through uh, a different part, like a root, uh, brown, trunk, uh, branches that we all know. Uh, then we put all the trees together to understand the forest of life. So that helps us to understand the contextual factors which affects this forest. And then uh, we progress to talk about um, in the forest, we, uh, it's a natural part that we, they, we experience storm, like uh, lightning, like, like uh, different, um, like uh, flooding or uh, people clearing the forest. So they all experience uh, different uh, hardship or trauma uh, uh, in, in, during the, uh, in the forest too. And then when we, they, we find the strength, uh, why, how to um, make the forest continues to grow and flourish, uh, we find the important um, um, belief values uh, then, and I that rescue the life um, wisdom, uh, the participant will move on to celebrate, celebration of life. So, but my our experience is we can uh, make this into six sessions instead of uh, four sessions, depending on the number of participants. Like the first session and the third session may take longer if we have a, a bigger group, okay? So normally for this group, we, uh, we uh, invite a participant uh, from uh, five to six only. So that can uh, create a very intimate conversation uh, for all the participants involved, okay? So these are the, uh, we connect the content with different conversations. For part, um, um, so this involves all the uh, previous uh, conversation tools that I have mentioned. So just briefly give an idea. So dif different, uh, the different part of the tree, uh, I have to acknowledge uh, Nasalo, um, she is a practitioner, narrative practitioner uh, from uh, South America, uh, Africa, and uh, she uh, originated this tree of life metaphor in working with uh, children who is facing HIV. Um, uh, but this uh, metaphor has been widely used to different age group, uh, including older adult. So these are some of the pictures that I have taken with the consent from the uh, participant that I will use it for teaching purposes. Um, so each of them uh, will involve in drawing the tree, okay? And they put together uh, to identify uh, what is the unique about the forest of the tree. And they talk about identify one uh, storm or hardship that ex they experience and try to find out what indeed they uh, grow from facing uh, that uh, life challenge, okay? And uh, since this is a group practice, um, when one per uh, person uh, shared the story, the other person will involve in providing witnesses uh, to, to the person who is telling. So we involve telling and retelling conversation uh, during the process, which I think is very beautiful. And for Chinese uh, older adult, they are very, they enjoy, they, it's so odd uh, instantly that they appreciate others. They never say something good about uh, themselves because we train to be very modest, okay? Uh, so uh, so uh, in, by putting them in a group setting, it just turned out flourish so beautifully. And, and uh, I, okay, so this gives a little bit about uh, more how to ask about, talk about roots, branch, trunk. Trunk is the strength skills that is known to the person. 
branches, the hopes and dreams, okay? And initially, uh, the model cover only eight parts. And after my practice, I have added uh, uh, one additional part called aerial and prop roots, okay? Um, so uh, we also cover uh, leaf, fruit, fr uh, flowers, and seeds. What is mean by aerial root? Aerial root is uh, um, uh, symbolizing uh, banyard tree. Uh, we have more banyard tree uh, in Asia. Uh, the banyard tree means that uh, there are so many uh, aerial root uh, growing from the uh, branches when the tree grow older and, and bigger, okay? Um, so this reflects the strength that the person has identified and lived by through earlier life challenges. This may be uh, their values, belief. So uh, in hardship, it is also an opportunity to testify uh, their values, their belief, their commitment in life. Um, so we, the question we will ask, what help uphold you during the trying times? Tell us a story when you first realize them. Have you uh, uh, have been supporting you subsequently? So through this process, the person is able to identify those aerial root, which is not part of the trunk. So after they uh, engage in this conversation, they find out that indeed through hardship, uh, the aerial root grow. And what happens when the aerial root grow older? It be, okay. So let me uh, share with some of the therapeutic documents that they have drawn. So, um, uh, so even though each of them have different part, there are some unique feature. There, are, there may be a little cave and a hole on the tree end, and they, each of these symbolize uh, something to them, important to them. Okay, this is another one. Uh, she is uh, India uh, uh, artist. So her pictures are very colorful. And by drawing the tree, it helps her to consolidate, integrate uh, her previous life experience, okay? Forest of life. Uh, we, well, after knowing our externalized, our individual uh, self, uh, we put all the trees together, we invite persons to stick their trees up, uh, and we invite a few persons to volunteer to share the, the, the story of the tree in front of the group. And they will, uh, it, and it is very easy that they are able to find what trees may have in common and the differences they have and ways in which they support each other as tree belongs to the same forest. So they, we began to engage in uh, outside the witness uh, conversation using uh, telling and retelling uh, conversations. Uh, and we also will en engage in remembering conversations there. So these are the, uh, when we put all the trees together, it forms a forest. And what about the post uh, clips here? The post it uh, indeed is gifts and responses from other uh, members. Uh, our group members are so modest in a way that when people appreciate them, they were not there to write it on on the uh, on the tree. Okay. So what we have to we have to think about ways how to collect all the feedbacks and and make it as a good documents for the persons to. To, uh, uh, to, to take home after the uh, group session is we create, we use uh, post-it and then we keep on giving one feedback to another. So those are very important uh, message uh, for, the, for each person as well. So, so at the end of the day, we, uh, they have some uh, additional po post-it uh, from the members. So we move to the third uh, session is related to story, storms of life. Create space for the persons to speak out some of the difficulties uh, they may experience. After the first, second part, people get to know each other and they are so comfortable to uh, disclose uh, part of their life uh, challenge that they experience. We assemble the group together to resume the conversation about tree and, and, and uh, forest. So we make it as a natural process that um, uh, uh, forests also face storm. It is a natural part um, of, uh, uh, of the life spent, okay? 
but we all we 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 don't talk only about the storm. We create space for the person to speak out to speak uh, about the challenge. Find ways they could collectively speak about some of the experience, acknowledge the effect of the harm, but most important is to unearth and acknowledge some of the skills and knowledges that the person demonstrate in trying to respond to these hazards of of their lives. Since they share uh, live in the same a lifespan, different state, uh, stage or, or face it like uh, going through the world war together, there is a lot of uh, resonance and, and share experience and difficulty. And they also appreciate uh, uh, the quality and, and the values that they that create uh, for their cohort. Okay, I want to share with you a, a banyard tree, which is next to our university. Uh, so what is what, what can you see from this uh, banyard tree? So there, there are some people here on the left corner, you can see the tree really get, uh, quite old uh, and which branches out, okay. But there are a lot of aerial root coming out from, the, from each branches. And you know what happened to this aerial root? It continues to grow and will touch the ground. Okay, you can see the hanging aerial root will become prop roots supporting the branches in return. So this become very obvious that indeed that for each hardship or difficult moment is testified the person's values, belief, commitment in life. But it's just that previously they are so modest, they never share these embedded messages with others. But when we engage in narrative pra practice, uh, and they have similar experience and life challenge and background. Most of our uh, participants, um, well, they, they live through poverty, okay? And, and they face the parahachi uh, uh, well will, whereby women are, have to be submissive to men. And so they share the difficulties and, and, and how they raise up all the children uh, by themselves and working at the same time. So they, uh, all these, uh, situation, life situation, uh, makes the um, aerial root continues to grow. And when it touch the ground, it become an external trunk and supporting the persons in, uh, in return. But uh, normally, uh, we never have any practice to, to collect all these uh, prop roots, okay? But using this metaphor, um, you don't have to be a very uh, educated person in order to identify uh, this pop uh, root. So by, by social learning uh, perspective, when you listen to other persons sharing the story, you begin to uh, uh, recollect your experience and able to share yours. So this is uh, beautiful, beautifully disclosed in the group uh, through the storm of life. So in start, instead of talking about challenge, they talk about strength and they, talk, and they understand and they share the meaning behind uh, why they have to go through all these sufferings, sacrifice, because they, because uh, uh, of something very meaningful to them. And through these consolidations, they build up their legacy again. They are not a person who is a uh, burden to the family. They are not a person with illness, and and um, and facing and and left in being alone. Okay, they indeed lead a very rich life uh, uh, for the family or for something which is very important for them. Okay, so after they have uh, uh, recollect and uh, res res uh, rescue all those forgotten memories, putting them together. We, we move on to do the celebration of life. So we document all this through uh, using certificate and song, record the hopes and dreams and the skills, inviting a range of outsiders uh, to witness the certificate giving uh, ceremony. So outside the witness is one of the another uh, characteristic, okay? So indeed in the society, there are people who care for them, especially the family member or the significant others because we want them to carry what they have identified uh, to go beyond the group. Uh, uh, and then they can, it can sustain in their family or the informal uh, network and circles. 
okay, we, we, will keep, uh, we will also write a letter to the family member to extend the supports to them. So, so the impacts go beyond the group um, uh, to, cre to create a special experience uh, for, for the members. And uh, uh, two months after each group, we will uh, invite them to have a reunion. So they will bring back the trees and share um, their development together. So that uh, will create a com community, a supportive community for them. So this is the last uh, session whereby they uh, try to document all the what they can find about the um, aerial route and port route uh, from the conversations. And, and they are writing this uh, certificate for them, uh, well, uh, uh, for each other. So this group is a little bit different in a way that uh, is not the worker who certify the uh, that they they have they are ready uh, to leave the group or they uh, they have indeed have graduated from uh, the group sessions. It's all of them uh, were the witness for, uh, for each other. Okay, so this is uh, another picture group picture at the end. So. Let me move on. Okay, so I would also like to cover uh, that uh, this um, is a, a project uh, which I have um, uh, integrated uh, uh, randomized clinical, weight least clinical uh, con control designs, uh, whereby a resident uh, um, uh, participant has been randomly assigned to a, um, a weight least uh, group. Uh, versus uh, a treatment group. That means um, uh, the control group will receive uh, the treatment after afterwards, okay? And with this cont uh, randomized control trial design was used to ensure that all eligible participants could receive the intervention. Wait list control group uh, offer access to NT after the study finish. Participant and recruitment, a total of 157 older adults, age 60 to 80, 83 will uh, recruit and 82 of which are randomly assigned to 12 intervention group. So I uh, thank you for the collaborator. They also share the venue whereby um, we try to go to different region uh, in Hong Kong um, so that uh, we can reach out uh, uh, other adults in different district. Recruit from 18 district elderly community center and uh, through the University Elder Academy in Hong Kong. So the application of a tree of life method, uh, methodology to receive four two hours NT sessions uh, to as, uh, uh, assess uh, perceived wisdom at the baseline. And at the end of the uh, treatment, uh, that is uh, two months, and then two months after the treatment and the eight months after the treatment, okay? So we, uh, the measure we have adopted uh, is a purpose-built questionnaire, okay, composed of uh, socio-demographic uh, information of the from the participant. And uh, we have validated a perceived wisdom um, uh, was measured uh, from the self-assess uh, wisdom score by uh, Webster, okay. And uh, uh, this uh, score uh, initially has 40 items questionnaire reflecting five components of wisdom that is critical uh, life expense, reminiscence, reflectiveness, openness to experience, emotional value, um, uh, regulations, and humor. Okay. And then we validate it and make it into a nine item uh, belief uh, brief. Um, uh, SW, uh, SAW uh, scale. Okay, so, so this is something that we have also translated uh, in Chinese. Uh, uh, participant re, uh, uh, response to each question using a Likert uh, type scale, whereby one reflect a strong disagree to six reflecting strong agree with good reliability. Okay, data analysis. We use descriptive uh, intention to treat ANOVAs and structural equation model, latent growth uh, curve uh, models with maximum likelihood estimation. Findings. So this is the consult table. So um, which shows uh, um, uh, 
all the uh, all the uh, attrition and this is the demographic uh, characteristics and there is no uh, significant difference between control and uh, experimental group uh, at baseline and this is the wisdom score um, a different point of interval t0 that's baseline t1 uh, and t2 and then t3 and this is the result of the unconditional and conditional latent growth uh, curve model uh, for the impact of NT on wisdom score. So uh, those who receive NT fused with tree of life methodology uh, demonstrate a significant positive change in human score compared with the weight list control. The time invariant correlates, uh, that is from zero from time baseline to the a uh, uh, third uh, uh, wave will introduce in a conditional latent uh, growth curve model. That's uh, model four. Uh, there are no significant um, difference uh, in the baseline uh, after the first uh, intervention. And uh, notably, the control group demonstrates significant wisdom score difference uh, from the intervention score at time two. Uh, and 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 time free. The effect was controlled uh, with age, gender, education level as well. The model also indicates good fit um, uh, with the following uh, score. All the above uh, models did not rely on correlating the error terms to fulfill uh, required uh, a, a standard for acceptance fit. There's no. Uh, uh, aversive reactions uh, from study participant. Okay, so um, let me see. I'm trying to watch out for my the, the, the use of time. So I, I did um, uh, trying to uh, up to here, um, well, try to highlight some uh, questions uh, for discussions here up to here. So how older adults uh, rediscover life wisdom and build legacy during um, tree of life negative uh, narrative uh, intervention. How will they redis uh, rediscover? Uh, how the use of language create the space for older adults to reconnect their preferred identity? Uh, what are the translational significance of these studies? So maybe we can um, uh, up. Maybe I can stop for. Um, uh, sometimes and invite uh, the participant to um, ask questions or uh, provide some feedback uh, to these questions. I can stop. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah so, so feel, hi there. So feel free to unmute if you have some questions and or you can just throw questions into the chat and I'll be happy to read them out. But I had one or two things I wanted to clarify. First of all, Fantastic study, 157. You were ambitious. <laughs> this is that's a that's a huge Thank number. Thank you. Device control. Yeah. So I have a couple questions. How many years did that take? It takes two years. Uh, well, yeah. we we can only do two groups uh, uh, for per week, and it takes uh, almost two months for one group, and we would uh, continue to recruit because they are from different district. So um, we have to do multitasking, okay? Uh, well, at the same time, when we are doing implementation of uh, two groups, uh, we will continue to recruit for the next group in other region. So, okay. so, so it's quite uh, um, interesting. Uh, indeed, I haven't mentioned that uh, this uh, project involved knowledge transfer. Uh, one, one thing about is uh, most social worker and counselor are so curious about this therapy that uh, they want to serve as uh, outside the witnesses and they and we go through with them. Uh, so there is a knowledge transfer component. Uh, so most of them are maybe my students and and they we enjoy uh, the process thoroughly. So I'll share with them the rundown of the um, of the group session, but we would demonstrate. I, I, I'm also one of the person who will lead the group together with two counselors. 
and and uh, and then we have uh, biweekly meetings together to uh, to control the uh, inter um, uh, practitioner uh, variabilities or or the fertility of the of the uh, treatment process, and and and. And at the end, we always uh, have to reserve one hour uh, for the uh, critical worker from that NGOs, from our collaborator to sort to to address the questions. And I hopefully they will continue to practice this in uh, after we retreat. So a lot of them uh, come back to to uh, uh, occasionally we receive questions from that, and and we build up a community of practice. Uh, so that actually leads beautifully to my next question. Uh, well, first comment, wow, that you fell, followed up for eight months is amazing. That's wonderful and, and certainly beats most RCTs. But am I correct? You said that at time zero and time one, there was no significant differences, but there was at time two on. Yes. So what, what was time one? Can you just, time zero, I get is baseline. Time one, they'd had what? Just like one of Immediately them? after the, uh, the treatment. So there are four sessions on a bi-weekly basis. That means about two weeks, two, two I mean, two months. Uh, time zero, uh, let's say uh, the first week of uh, October. And then we'll meet on the uh, first, the, six, the next meeting will be the third week of October. But they have to do homeworks, like drawing the, the, <laughs> the trees. Uh, I will give them, uh, yeah, give them the different part of the trees. And, and when they come, normally after the first session, they come back earlier and they stay after the group sessions to continue drawing the trees. So it's so uh, interesting. But the other group um, is a weightless control. So they don't have any intervention. But so I'm just wondering, so just do you have any insight into why you saw the wisdom growth, but not immediately after the program, but like at time two, which I assume is, is, is farther down. So why do you think there was a lag effect? Does it take a little while to for these ideas to percolate or? Well, in terms of qualitative comment, I find out uh, there are a lot of in, in inspiring stories. But in terms of quantitative uh, data, this is what we got. So it is interesting. Um, uh, of course, uh, in this paper, I only share uh, life wisdom. Uh, indeed, there are other variables as well, like uh, sense of control, depression, um, uh, uh, different different uh, psychoso uh, psychosomatic uh, uh, Variables that we have uh, collect, and uh, and and it's interesting because there's not much study uh, uh, studying life wisdom in in Hong Kong. So that's why I want to share that so much. We just talk about life wisdom. Uh, most researcher may not choose this as an outcome variable. So this is what I really want to share that. Uh, we need to go one step further <laughs> in order to, to externalize all the problem talk, to be able to call, recall, collect all the uh, belief values that people uh, live by through different life challenge. And, and indeed, I have another paper on, on the stories, more on the qualitative uh, stories that they share, uh, how we able to recollect the landscape of identity, the preferred identity, the, the, they are able to make meaning of the hardship. Uh, um, maybe that takes time to, to reconstruct uh, in a way that uh, even though they are able to share uh, uh, before they can, uh, they can, um, believe this is part of them. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of uh, the um, participants tell us that it makes a difference when the family members also uh, share this as the other aspect of their life. Uh, because at the last session at, for celebration of life, we invite the family members. I mean, people's home, they want to uh, connect. They, 
we get let them uh, we give them some invitation card on the first session and they can uh, because the group session is structured uh, we know which day we will meet again on the fourth uh, meeting so uh, they are given like uh, almost two weeks time to identify uh, people whom they want to share their experience after joining the group so so this is another characteristic about narrative group practice in a way that we continue to carry on. Uh, uh, hi, uh, Lamson. Just want to say that this is great study. Learn so much from your talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, uh, even though it is midnight in Hong Kong. <laughs> Lamson. Yeah. OK, so so they continue. They, it's so beautiful. They they uh, do, some couples, they you know, they quarrel at home because uh, because uh, that you know the the survivors uh, is very uh, I mean emotional to face uh, disabilities so um, so they always shout at the spouse but the you know the spouse uh, have no choice uh, when when the stroke survivors suddenly got a stroke the caregiver suddenly have to turn to become uh, a physiotherapist, a nutrition, a nurse, and and uh, yeah, uh, have no choice. Uh, especially in Chinese family, uh, your your spouse and your children has to automatically take up the caring role. Uh, so when they don't know how to communicate each other, but just just shouting each other will cause a lot of family uh, argument. But interesting when they come to the group. When we ask, why you shout at him? Uh, they said that because I care for him. You know, when they talk, when they shout at each other, they don't say, I care for you uh, in that regard. But when we ask them all these questions, they began to tell us all the, all the things which they care. And, and through this, well, I have another metaphor called train of life. Um, I, I, I practice three metaphor, okay? Uh, but tree is uh, also very, um, uh, I enjoy do, uh, using tree because I like all these uh, aerial roots and prop roots. And, and train uh, is another thing that when, when, they, when they communicate directly with the problem, externalize the problem and have a, a intimate conversation with the problem, the, all the family member and uh, um, persons, we, we don't call kind, we call them persons, which is more neutral in a way. Kind uh, indeed represent a powerful relationship between therapists and they, they, we, we are there to help them, right? There are power relations, but persons means the persons come to consult us, but indeed they are our consultant in return. So we are a more equal relationship. So, um, so uh, well, we'll go into the, that aspect when I teach it, teach a narrative as a practice course. Um, uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the thing about use of language, respect, um, with respecting them, not to make them feel they are a problem, will help them to recall, reconnect all the forgotten important aspect of their life. And, and it's so beautiful that they, they find out, even though they have illness, they have recollect the sense, the purpose of life. And, and then they will continue to find ways to, to sustain their life, to be, to, so that they can continue to live with the loved ones uh, uh, for the remaining time of the year. So, so that uh, instead of fighting each other, uh, um, in return. So that is so beautiful to me. Okay, well, thank you. That's very um, fascinating. I'm just looking, there's nothing in the chat right now. Does anyone want to unmute and say anything and or put something in the chat? Because if not, I think we've got just a few minutes and it seems to me you set yourself up with some good questions to at least uh, to, to address if you yeah. want to touch some of them. I can, yeah. Okay, so go oh. ahead. I, I'll interrupt you if something comes in the chat that that's- Sure, uh, I quickly go through them. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. So how, how do older people rediscover their life wisdom and build a legacy during the three 
uh, of life narrative intervention. And other people were asked to describe what supports their lives uh, survive from the storm. They find beside the roots of the tree, they, uh, they, they have a, their aerial root, okay, grow out from the branches of the tree. And prop roots symbolize the wisdom of life and the value system developed over time through various life experience, which make them stronger. Such of this unique outcome is crucial from hardship situation helps older people to rediscover their strength, talent, values, belief, commitment, purpose in life, and reconnect with their own preferred identity coexist with the problem saturated identities. So basically that is in line with uh, narrative practices. People, we have to respect, people have multiple uh, identity. Once they got into a problem as a patient, doesn't mean that the other uh, identity, indeed there are other identity coexist. So this has uh, practice implications uh, for clinical practitioners, okay? When other people rediscover their intentional understanding of self, coherent with the personal identity, their sense of worth and agency uh, become greatly enhanced with a stronger capacity and resilience to cover their life challenge. They want to, uh, 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 to have airlines uh, with this strength and uh, belief so that they can become stronger when they face problem again, okay? They don't, they, they, they find out there are indeed blessing, silver lining, uh, and they search, keep on searching for that, uh, which is uh, indeed very beautiful uh, for me. And I learned from, from no, listening to the live stories and, and it makes me feel stronger too. I, I have to convince, I call, uh, 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 to confess that we all have ups and downs, right? But uh, uh, the, the person whom uh, we work with help us to grow stronger in a way. We learn from the life wisdom. And, and we appreciate that. Okay. In terms of the second question, the so use of language uh, creates space for older people to explore their preferred identity. So we we uh, fully um, experience the fertility of the identity, the co-construction and the reconstruction of the identity. There are possible way to do so. Uh, so it helps us to reflect: Are there any negative influence for professional language? Okay, so even though we know there are some professional terms, how can we convey to our, uh, the person whom we work with nicely, okay? Uh, uh, and connect them with their strengths and, and, and values. Okay, dialogue is a media uh, for co-construction. So are there other tools or ways uh, which help profession, professional like uh, psychologists or social worker counselors to conduct uh, uh, narrative uh, um, and provide justice, uh, narrow, narrow justice, okay, to the person whom we work with. The awareness and the deconstruction of the privilege of the uh, professional that uh, uh, help us to reflect uh, our professional role and the use of language, okay. Translation significance, as I begin, I share already, um, well, in, in books and histories, uh, we all talk about, we respect our seniors. Uh, uh, they have accumulated variable wisdom throughout their life, but there's not much uh, we can find from empirical studies. But recently there are more, especially from uh, Chicago school, okay? Uh, but neither uh, they nor uh, others um, may recognize all this. How can we help our older adult and the young people to respect um, uh, the, the, this uh, wisdom. And so uh, we, we need to recollect them and uh, encourage our older adults to transfer this wisdom to the younger people of the family. They, this may, uh, uh, once when they reconnect it, it helps them uh, to reach uh, self-integrity, okay? And have a better sense of self, even though they live through illnesses and, and, and facing impending death. Okay, we find that uh, there are empirical data uh, from these interventions that indeed uh, uh, can help the participants to re-examine their life experience, recognize and rediscover their life wisdom and build a legacy. Okay, uh, the interventions significantly improve self-perception of wisdom compared to baseline. 
and con uh, control with a short and long-term effects, narrative therapy could be employed to assist older people to recognize the values of the wisdom to enhance self-worth and participation uh, in their family, as well as the community. Okay, I really like the term person instead of kind. Yes, good point, thank you. Thank you, Polly. Yes, I always remind my student uh, not to use kind. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we have to be very conscious about this. Yeah. Uh, but maybe it's only practiced in my narrative course. Uh, in other course, uh, same social worker likes to use kind. Uh, it takes time. Yeah, I try to um, continue preaching uh, on this. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Esmia. I think time is uh, close to yes. one hour. So thank you so much, a round of applause or thumbs up or whatever from the people online. Um, it's been really fascinating, the power of metaphor uh, and, and how you've been able to use it, having the vision of uh, giving us the background, but also finding such great evidence is wonderful. And in uh, I'm going to make a little plug for Esther, not that she asked, but Esther is actually just finishing up a book on narrative therapy with, is it Columbia University Press? Yes. Yes, so that'll come out, I guess, in the next, what, two years or something? They take a long time, I know, but. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so if you're interested in, in learning more, uh, there's more uh, coming out and we'd love to encourage you. We also wanted to say we run a workshop series um, and one of the ones coming up in June is with Nick Westrad, who's a wisdom expert from the University of Illinois at Chicago. And the uh, official title of it is, um, it's Honoring the Wisdom of Our Elders, the Importance of Story Making and Storytelling for Positive Aging. So it builds a lot on what Esther said today. It's a four uh, week workshop that we provide at the Institute. And if you're interested in those types of um, workshops, we have a lot more coming up uh, about trauma, about uh, um, cognitive behavioral therapy and everything. But I don't want to keep you long. Uh, thank you so much for coming. And thank you, especially Esther, for a fantastic and, and really interesting presentation. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Esther. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll, we'll um, hopefully see you at some of the upcoming uh, lectures, which will be in the new year. Thanks. Yes, again. I Thanks. would like to join the upcoming uh presentation as well yeah yeah thank so you Asmi. then there's lovely little comments popping into the chat with okay people. thank you very much very yeah, informative thanks. thank you thank you bye 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 bye